I'm Cliff May of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. The situation in Egypt has been very fast moving and the analyses have been pretty much all over the board. I'm going to talk with three FDD scholars today about what's happening in Egypt, where it's going, and what the U.S. policy responses should be. Yeah, I think it's quite clearly a coup. I think the uh, military uh, took the moment. The moment certainly was propelled by the massive street demonstrations. But I think they uh, have wanted to down the Brotherhood for a bit of time. Hearing words like coup-volution uh, or military-enhanced uh, revolution, uh, and, and this is the way that they're describing it. I mean, at the end of the day, you had 20, upwards of 22 million people come out into the streets protesting the rule of Mohamed Morsi that represents roughly a quarter of the Egyptian population that is significant. At the same time, you can't deny the fact that the military did, in fact, step in. Uh, so it creates some gray area that I think the administration is going to exploit uh, to, uh, to continue to follow a policy that it wishes to. Uh, uh, having access to the Suez and, and other parts of Egypt, uh, whether it's maintaining the, uh, the Camp David Accords, these are all things that are crucial interests for the United States. I don't see how we could suspend aid without uh, creating mass unheaval and losing our leverage uh, with the Egyptian army. I, I'm, I'm torn about this. I do think it is important that the United States make some kind of effort to observe its laws and to take its laws seriously, but also to take seriously its national interests and not to be uh, slaves to a law that at the end of the day uh, is really um, pretty foolhardy. I'm not sure you would ever design a law like this for the, the complexity of the kind of foreign situations that the United States faces. Well, first and foremost, they should cut off all aid to the military. Uh, and if Congress wants to revote that aid, then change the law. But the law is quite clear, and the actions were quite clear. It was a coup. And again, I, I think the amount, uh, the notion that we actually maintain leverage with the uh, Egyptian military, I think, is a myth. Again, I think the Muslim Brotherhood is split on the question of violence. Some have openly called for an intifada. What that means exactly, we're not sure, but that it certainly entails civil unrest. And then you have this younger faction of Muslim Brotherhood activists who are saying that the most important component of all of this is rule of law and democracy. Uh, at the end of the day, I just think the Egyptian military is too powerful too coherent an institutional force, and I do think it enjoys enough residual support across broad sections of the Egyptian population that they're going to be able to avoid that descent into all-out civilian conflict. Right now, there are no good options. Uh, on the one hand, we've seen the fall of the Muslim Brotherhood, which is a positive development. The Brotherhood has discredited its, itself uh, very openly for all of the world to see. Uh, but at the same time, we've seen a very muscular military come in and start calling the shots. Uh, so in other words, the, the, the army is not a good choice. The Brotherhood is not a good choice. Right now, uh, I think it's understandable that there's a, a certain amount of paralysis on the part of the White House. And I think all we can do is, as best we can, uh, take the situation, the hand that we've been dealt, try and support the Egyptian people in this interim government as best we can to achieve some degree of, of stability and then to try and begin very slowly to put Egypt on the path to some degree of greater pluralism, freedom, and liberalism. 